Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Um, hope I haven't got any white thing in my mouth. I need to check. Because <laughs> I was having yogurt, you know, so I just hope I haven't got. Alright, yeah, we get to. Okay guys, um, welcome to my channel. My name is Nelo. For those of you who are new and if you're old, welcome. You guys know I love you. And if you're new and you're yet to subscribe, if you're yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, so welcome to today. Today, <laughs> no, no, I'm sleeping and you know, I'm just here, just relaxing. So I was like, you know what? I've got the story time, you know. Let me, why don't, why don't I just do like, story time video and tell you guys about that time when mm, st stupidity i mean i was really stupid when my stupidity almost landed me into a hot 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 stinking mess like it wasn't funny before i start the story though let me just say something that um let me go a little bit spiritual and um, philosophical here so you guys i just i believed like after this thing happened to me, I just believe that every time I think about that incident, I of this strong belief that everybody that comes into our lives at every point in time has a role to play. Sometimes some people play the role and then they move on. Some people remain in your life forever. But believe me, everyone in your life has a role to play. Like the girl that saved me. That. God bless you, Nene. I will never ever forget her in my whole life. Like, if she ever needs my help or needs my needs anything from me, I would always do it for her. Okay, I'm jumping. <laughs> so let's go back. Let's go back to to the beginning of this story. So, I think it was in my third year in school. Yeah, third year in uni. For some reason, I was just very stupid. Like, that's why I said my stupidity almost landed me in a hot mess. Like, I was really stupid. I forgot to submit my um, course form. Like, every semester, you have a course form that is handed out to you. So, you're meant to fill out the forms, the courses that you're taking for that semester, and submit it to your course rep, who will then submit it to the dean. So, you know, if you did not submit your course form, it, mean, it means that you know you haven't registered your course, you haven't registered any course for that semester. So even if you attend lectures and you write an exam, you won't have any result because no course form. So for some reason I was stupid, I did not submit my course form until it was really really late. Exams were about to start and by the time I got to you know so i went to the class the course rep you know i was like hey i haven't submitted my course form here's my course form and it's like oh sorry i've already submitted it to the dean so you have to go to the dean and so i started panicking and i was talking to people i can't remember how this thing happened i think i was talking to someone and the person was like oh i know someone who can do it for you can submit it for you it's not an issue it's not a problem so he introduced me to this guy and you know the guy was like oh it's not a problem the dean and i were five and six you know we hang out together we drink together in the evening we're chill like that so just bring the course form you know what this evening i'll come and pick you up at your hostel and then we'll all hang out together and then we'll give the team the course form there you know so i was like oh really so i was like okay so i give him my hostel number i give him my number i was like he, he so this guy drives a bike you know you guys i went to university of nigeria suka suka is a village i think the only place that is open in suka is inside the campus every other place around the suka is a village once it's eight o'clock everywhere is dark there's no trans no form of transportation like nothing moves nothing breathes it's just pit darkness so this guy came i think he came to my hostel like around 6 30 7 ish he doesn't live inside the school campus he says he lives in his village because it's from Nusuka there so he was like, yeah, that the dean lives, the dean is from his village, you know, they are paddies. So I was like, okay, come and pick me up by 6.30ish. He came, I was ready, I got on the bike. And then we went on, by the time we got, 
I mean, this bike was going and going and going and going inside this remote village. I was like, oh. but me, I was like, okay, he has a bike, so it's going to bring me back with the bike. Like, I was so naive. I was so naive, seriously. You know, so we got there, I think around 7, 7.30, we were waiting, we went to this pub and we were there, you know, he was like, oh, they should get us palm wine and bush meat and all of that. But me, I wasn't interested in all those things because all I came to do was submit my course form. So I was like, um, no, that I didn't want to have anything. I said, I should have something now. I said, no, that was fine. I didn't want to have anything. So they should bring him a uh, pound of jam and bush meat. You know, he ate, he drank his palm wine. It was getting to like 7.30, you know, to 8. I was like, so where is Dean now? When are we going to go and see the Dean so that I can just, so that I should not relax. That where the dean used to hang out, he was going to come soon. I should just relax. Uh uh, why am I not relaxed now? Why don't I want to eat anything? I should relax. I was like, no, thank you. I just want to submit this form and go. So it was getting to like around to eight. I almost got it, it was getting to around like to eight. So I was like, you know what? I don't think this dean is coming. I just want to go back because it's already getting late and they're still going to lock my. Um, hostel, you know, because I still have to get back into school and all of that. And once it's eight o'clock, the bikes don't. Uh, I won't be able to get a bike that will take me into the school. So I was like, "Don't worry, I'll take you back." I said, "Okay, then start taking me back now because I really need to start going." There's no, I don't think the thing will be coming today because at this point I was beginning to feel very uneasy. I wasn't comfortable with the whole settings anymore. So I was like, "Okay, let's go." Next thing, he went to his bike. He shook. He started the bike once the bike went started it again <laughs> then he opened the tank he and he was like ah that he no fuel at that point i was like jesus christ jesus christ jesus christ one chance one chance one chance like this is one remote village like ever since we've been there no bike no car no movement nothing darkness everywhere only me and some group of boys. I was just thinking, I said, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. How did I get myself into this kind of mess? Jeez, I was in my house. I, I, was, I was literally behaving like this. You know? so I said, how am I going to get back now? How am I going to get back now? You, oh God, what is that? I should relax. How am I stressing? Relax now. You sleep here. Tomorrow morning you go. Eh? <laughs> Jesus and at this point I looked at my phone no service like no service in this village there was no service on my phone there was I couldn't reach nobody I couldn't call anybody there was nothing I could do you know he was like I should just relax let's go home that let him take me to his house and show me where I'm going to sleep <sighs> this thing was as I was telling you this thing it was like 8 o'clock going to pass 8 you know, and I was just, I said at some point, when we got, he took me to his house, I was like, hey, I was sleeping. See boys in this house, Jesus Christ. I said, mm, not me, oh. And I was like, that I'm going to start going home, that I don't mind, I will trek to wherever. Like, I had no idea where I was, but I was like, I will just keep trekking. So him and the group of boys were just behind me because I was just walking and they were walking behind me. He was like, look, you can't get any, like, like, you can't get any transportation here. You can't, it's already late. You can't get anything. You can't go anywhere. Just come and go and sleep. You know, they were just following me. Me, I was walking, walking on the road. That is dark road. I kept on walking and then it got some, some point. I was like, see, babe, if we pass this place, if we get there's a boundary that we cannot cross because you know it then moves to another village and they have vigilantes there so i won't be able to you know get there before anybody so once we just get to this place i'm going back and then you're on your own on my own <laughs> i just kept going like i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god jesus christ i got to a point so i looked at my phone and i saw network there was service so apparently at that point there was service so I, and the place was like steepy so I walked up I got more bars and then I called house because I've been thinking who can I call who can I call and my my boyfriend then wasn't wasn't in town so he was just out of it my school boyfriend then wasn't in town so he was like like I couldn't even call him like even if I called him I don't know how he's going to come out of 
he's not in town so he's probably maybe going to call somebody or something and that they might not be able to reach me you know so i was like okay let me call chinaya this is my friend chinaya she lived she lived she doesn't live in the school campus she lived outside outside campus and her house was she lived in town although not like I was like, if there's anyone that can get me out of this mess, it has to be Chinaya. And the funny thing about me and Chinaya was that um, we, we used to be friends in our first year. And then we stopped being friends. Then we reconnected again in that third year. Like it wasn't too long we reconnected and we started talking. So I used to go to her place to see her, you know. And so I was, I, I called her and I was like, Nene, look, I am in a situation right now. Like I'm with this group of boys. I don't even know how I'm going. I mean, just because I can't, remember, I can't remember the name of that village. But then I knew the, I knew the name of that. I said, I'm in this village right now, and there is no way I can live here. I don't know if you can come out, find a bike, whatever. Just ask the bike, come with the bike man, and pick me up from here. Because if I sleep here, I'm done for, you know. She was like, so she was like, oh, she will try, but at this time, that is hard to get a bike, you know. So she came out and. She's next, we're just there. I was just there walking and hope these guys were just relaxed, you know, because they were so sure that there was no way I was going to get out of here or even get any bike that was coming. Because at this point, the bike people had closed, it was like around 8 30 now or thereabouts. The bike people had closed, there was no bike moving. So, Tina said she came out that fortunately, she just as she just came out of her house, came to town. She saw this one, this bike man, and she was like, This was where she was going to. The bike man was like, Oh, you're very lucky because that's where I live. I've closed, I'm just going back home. So, she was like, Oh, please just take me there and then you bring us back, please. That's how Tina got on the bike, and then next thing I saw a bike coming 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 i was like the bike got to me and it was chinaya that got down from the bike i was like oh my god oh my god chinaya thank god oh my god chinaya you saved me you saved me that's how me and chinaya got on the bike and the bike man took us back the bike man was even telling us that you know that god just saved us that he had closed that he normally closes early even that it was just that he had to go and drop someone and he was just on his way home he wasn't planning to pick up anyone anyway <laughs> So he got me and Chinaya back to our house and all through the night it's just my I had as in I had goose pimples all over my body. I was shivering, I was like God, this is a miracle. Like I just knew that it was God. Every it was just God. Like it was my mom's prayers. It was God that saved me that night. Like I would have seen my bow. <laughs> oh my god. My punani would have seen Pepe because I'm sure it would have just been if this person finished doing the other I will come and do and then I won't be able to say anything because everybody will just be like, you know how rape can be in, in, in Nigeria. They blame the victim. Like you two, what did you where what did you find all the way from the campus into that remote village at that time of the night? What were you thinking? Like I don't think I would have been able to open my mouth to even tell anybody what happened. Do you understand? I just thank God and I will, I will never, ever, ever forget this incident, forget that night, like, it's ingrained in my memory. <sighs> so yeah, that's it for this story time, hope you guys enjoyed it, um, thank you so much for watching, please subscribe, please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in my next video, bye!